Hello and welcome back. Today we are continuing our USA run in Victoria 3. In last episode, we became the oil baron we were destined to be, you know, slotting in standard oil, having it be profitable, and really popping off. We also gave, you know, the UK a good clapping. And, uh, you know, this episode we're going to be kind of doing two things or focused on two things, which is going to be passing 1 billion GDP and just kind of making money moves and market moves and this type of thing. Uh, you know, we're still playing under this under 25 infamy playstyle and we might be getting off of this next episode, but for now we're going to try and keep the infamy low and keep the oil flowing, which is a big part of why we annexed a whole bunch of the Middle East over here, uh, but making money moves. Kind of what we would th want to think about is Bengal. Bengal was just released from, uh, you know, the UK, and we would love to pull them into our market for two reasons. One, um, just generally this is going to be good in terms of uh, creating buy orders in our market for various things that will allow us to specialize more and be a little bit more industrial oriented. But second, and more importantly, it is going to facilitate an enormous amount of migration. And so this is really what we're concerned with. We were in the UK's market before. I said we were in the UK's market before. And as you can see, we already have a ton of Indian pops. And, you know, not Indian Indian Pops, but Indian Indian Pops. We have Tamil, Tamil, Bengali, Bengali, Bengali. And we just, you know, already have quite a few, you know, if we look at the population tab and go by charts, you can see that, uh, you know, Hindu, we have 45 million Hindus out of our 200 million Pop, which is a pretty big number at this point. We expect to see migration tuned down a little after 1.5, but we want to get them in our market. Currently, they hit our guts, but what we can do is we can increase volume of trade, which you can see we're already doing this a little bit, but we're just going to look hey what do you need we got it and just export as much as we can that is uh you know plus 75 and then import as much as that we can that is minus 75 with them to not only increase you know productivity of our own buildings because bengalis were just released from the uk and so they're hurting for a ton of goods but also uh because this will make them likely to take a more uh positive attitude towards us right now they're antagonistic and we can get them off of antagonistic in the event that they they see us as a valuable trade partner so we're going to put in a whole bunch more like that and we're also going to do this with two other countries that were released from the UK and that is Liberia as well as Ireland now Argentina is a little bit of an interesting case here for most of our subjects when we take a look at their population we see that their population is trending wildly down as a result of us siphoning off migrants from them however Argentina appears to be siphoning off migrants from the rest of our market here and so they are going to get increasingly expensive if we want to eventually annex them and so to that end what we are going to do is we're going to be a little bit more aggressive in trying to reduce their autonomy uh, and annex them as quickly as possible uh, that way they will no longer be siphoning off migrants because this is going to cause increasing you know levels of uh, infamy required to annex them however if we take a look I'm guessing ooh, they don't even have where is this that's curious. I was expecting to see a lot of Han Pops, and we instead we just see mainly Plantian. So I don't know if they're just... Man, maybe they just really believe in health institutions. Uh, but they are doing really, really well, uh, you know, in terms of their population. And because of that, because their population is not declining, we do want to be a bit more aggressive with going after them. Even if it's going to kick us over this, uh, you know, 25 infamy mark, we'll just tolerate it for a little while and chill for a little bit. Just kidding, we have zero chill. We're going to go after Siam, and the reason what we're going to do is we're still not going to accrue any infamy here but what we're going to do is they are actually isolationist and so what we want to be able to do is we want to uh open their market so that we can make money moves with them and look to eventually get them in so we're go just going to do this if they back down great but this is going to be a zero infamy play that we can do um that is going to be useful for us you know we already did it, did it with japan and then japan had a revolution because someone upset the natural of order of things by you know making them not isolation and then uh, during their revolution they offered uh, to become our subject and so now we have a nice little subject in Japan and so um, whom by the way unlike Argentina we are siphoning off a ton of pops from Japan so we are not in a rush to um, you know dominion them or uh, puppet them but this is a similar kind of play pattern that we want to gauge with in Siam especially because we have such a big market now to like throw around and just kind of a little bit of an update I suppose on these markets if we just look at these are all the trade routes we put in you know on Bengal uh, these are all the trade routes uh, with Liberia of course some of these are not profitable now we just really want to have a really large volume of trade 
good. So we won't concern ourselves with too much. For the most part, they're profitable and we don't want to babysit it super, super highly. But this is going to help to change their attitude. They are antagonistic still. They, I'm guessing, will still be antagonistic. But Ireland, very genial, very big happy, and would be willing to join our customs union probably if we can get them above, uh, you know, friendly, as well as getting an obligation on them, which we are trying to do with our bankroll here. Siam so rightfully backs down, and so we'll look for another war. So next up, we are again trying to declare a low infamy war. We could probably start transitioning to a high infamy playstyle, but we want to make money moves, not, you know, military moves. And so instead we're going to go liberate country, and we are going to select a perm, which has an enormous amount of resources, is not particularly dense on population, and you can make an argument that liberating Ukraine is a little bit better. However, we want to leave no man left behind, and I, by no man, I mean, of course, no oil well. And uh, Perm is going to give us pretty close to an adjacency here if we can, or it will give us an adjacency. If we can get Perm in the market, we will, Ural is a part of Perm, and this will give us an adjacency to Uralisk, which of course has, uh, you know, access to itself despite it looking funny. Uh, whenever a state is split, it always has access to itself. So if we get into contact with this portion of Uralisk, we will get market access to all of Uralisk. And so even if we had, for example, this province as well, we would still have access even if we just had, you know, access to Ural in terms of our market. But by releasing Perm, we are hopefully uh, going to be able to generate, uh, you know, contact again um, with our, our long lost oil rig, um, you know, our son and boy, um, whom we miss very much and want to bring back into the fold. I'm a family man. And so uh, what we will do is we will go liberate country and we will liberate perm, as it were, as our war goal here. And we will do this and they will almost certainly not back down. Also, we see Liberia is here, uh, you know, having an uprising. We'll try and reverse sway our way in. And even if we can't reverse sway our way in, we will be joining on their side either way because currently they have an antagonistic attitude. This will change their attitude towards us and this combined with, you know, the very large volume of trade is going to make it very likely that we can kind of pull our way into the customs union in relatively short order. So we will take a look here. We'll offer support. Ooh, transfer states. You don't say. We, will, of course, would prefer, you know, become subject, but transferring for anything will be kind of nice here. And it would be even nice if we could, yeah, if we could transfer to Timbuktu, this is going to be especially nice because this will give us the ability to have a kind of monopoly here on this, uh, you know, colonization area. And so this will also, uh, of course, after we get into that sort of situation, they should just separate from being antagonistic once we are on the same side as them. Uh, we will need to move a bunch of people to these fronts, though, and so we'll be doing that, uh, you know, to make sure we don't uh, have ourselves too big of trouble here uh, going after Russia, who is in fact concerned. Justifiably so. So, very unfortunately for us, Qing joins on the side of Russia, which means as soon as the war starts, they will be exiting our customs union. We have been siphoning off so many Han Pops, this is really unfortunate. Now, we are siphoning off Pops from other countries now, and we've been expanding this type of thing for a while, uh, but we kind of have two options here. We can either go bad and take a bunch of Qing provinces. I don't think we're going to do that, but it's certainly an option. It's probably the stronger option, but I think uh, we want to try and maneuver as best we can without having to do that. And so instead we will, you know, just go for war reparations on, um, you know, Qing, I think. And another thing we could do is we could just try and sway in, uh, well, let's see what France wants, but we can sway in Prussia for sure, because we have an obligation with them. They want East Sahara. Uh, on France, which is kind of something we don't, we're not that interested in giving up, because uh, we do want to be able to colonize in through this way. But you know what, East Sahara itself is really not worth a lot, and we swayed it to get in on them anyways, and we'll be getting this with Liberia, so we'll be able to colonize this way anyways, and so maybe this isn't such a big deal. And so we'll see if we can maybe get Russia to back down here, uh, and if they back down, then we won't have the war with Qing, and Qing will stay in the market. And so uh, let's try and sway both France and Prussia in here, and uh, hope that this uh, diplomacy works. So France sides, and then of course, sway with obligations, call in obligation. We might wanna make a few other war goals primary, um, like ooh, we could liberate Mongolia. We don't hate this. Um, we can't make it primary, but let's liberate Mongolia as well here. And then we called in an obligation, and then let's see about maybe liberating, liberating Manchuria we also don't hate. 
if we go to war, they will be ejected from the market, and then we can deal with these smaller these smaller units. So maybe we do this. I think it's better than liberating Armenia. And so we'll we'll see how this goes. We would love to take Manchuria, and so uh, hopefully this gives us a little bit of uh, you know some wiggle room regarding what we can do here. China also notably has a really strong military because uh, they are really good at now at actually swapping up to PMs. They actually have more army power projection than us because their military is, of course absolutely massive i'm not sure if they're getting enough military goods and this type of thing uh but we will be increasing the size of our military by at least 100 battalions maybe 200 and really really cranking up in that regard um you know we have the second offensive army in which we are you know putting in a bunch of shrapnel artillery we will also you know put in good mobilization options and probably move this over to this theater and look to come in from manchuria because i imagine Qing will mainly be defending north and south china if they move everyone to the russian front though we should should be able to get easy enforcements on them uh, but again still hoping that we just see a back down here and not hoping to see you know a whole uh big fight but if we do um it is what it is you know uh we have them very very worried but they haven't started mobilizing yet and we're basically full mobilized and so this is turning out to be way less of a money move and uh way more of a you know terrible big war move it appears as the pieces are moving here that Great Qing is completely abandoning having any sort of defensive force uh, to defend against landings, and so they are likely to going. They are likely to be in bad shape following this because uh, we're just going to land them and take like half the country before they can get back because this is a slow going. You can see everyone's kind of moving over. We see we have some very very weak fronts. Uh, you know here we only have thirty defending against like a hundred something, uh, and it will be a little bit tough going. But we're we should have considerable advantages on important fronts. They also left this front undefended. So the AI is maybe not going to be optimal in this sort of defense, uh, but we're gonna let these Chinese armies, we're gonna let them full get over to some fronts over here, and then we're gonna land them, because we have troops ready here to land. We have troops here that we maybe could push with, and so I think that we win this, despite having, um, you know, a little bit worse on um, the overall armies. And But unfortunately, Qing is now out of our market. They're in their own market. They're likely to join the Russian market again. And um, this is big sad for us. But we're not taking any of their territories, so they shouldn't be unfriendly with us uh, following this. And so, you know, they're even still friendly now. So maybe we can get them back into the market after this. So we got in on Qing's capital relatively easily. Uh, our cavalry, mono cavalry unit is pushing. They have four generals, just ten cavalry units, so they should push extraordinarily fast and this is kind of what they're coming back to deal with um, over here we are slowly pushing uh, we got a ton of battles going hopefully these go kind of in our favor here if we take a look we should be getting you know relatively good offense on our you know offending ones uh, or on our, our offensive ones because we have these split armies and you can see here we have a huge differential when we're defending so we should slowly grind them down Prussia just gave them an absolute shellacking uh, we will need to move a defensive army up here uh, did our fleet even get there in time to land? Maybe our fleet didn't even get there in time to land. Where's our land party? Westphalia? Okay, they're right here. Just pushing, and so they will be pushing. And, uh, I guess they are kind of united with the Prussian units. Uh, but having both capitals here is looking in really good shape. We're also pushing up here, uh, which is not the biggest deal. And we are moving defensive armies here in anticipation of this 125 stack coming back. As soon as we have another kind of offensive army, I think what we are going to do before their stack gets here with our cavalry army what we're going to do because we don't want them to get locked up in infinite battles we are going to land down here and then they will be able to push extremely fast down here as these other two armies uh kind of come in and pick up the slack oh, wait wait no did we lose the front maybe we lost the front here that'd be a shame uh he's gonna get there like four days before us and so hopefully you know hopefully we can get there in time please two one zero maybe yeah okay so we get there in time with uh you know the east asia defense and the second offensive army which is going to look to push back into beijing and so maybe we won't have anywhere we were hoping to really tear a ton of territories uh but we might still get a pretty big tear here down in the south uh which we are going towards with our mono cavalry army and also, you know, once we enforce on Russia, which is looking extremely likely, we will be able to divert our efforts back to Xing. And, um, you know, hopefully hopefully we can make some money moves after.
afterwards and get them in our market. You know, their defenses seem to suggest that they actually might not be on, you know, a higher form of infantry and might just instead be on, you know, the complete irregulars. And so, you know, this uh, army power projection might just be something that in 1.5.5 is just a, not a reliable indicator of, you know, how strong someone is. And, um, you know, we're pushing in quite quickly on all fronts here uh, and they're taking too long to get to fronts. Um, you know, over here, we're still pushing, although it has slowed down a little bit. We're still pushing down here. But as long as we, you know, control the capital of Ingria, uh, we will get really for fast inf uh, enforcement times. And I think we're churning through their troops pretty well, too. Uh, because on our defense, uh, you know, because of how we have it situated, where we have the dual armies, the offensive and the defensive, I think this puts us in really good shape to be both good on the pushing and as well as the defending. And they just don't have good pushing armies. And so it's like they're just throwing their troops into a meat grinder. I mean, here we're really getting a lot in on the Great Shing. And uh, it doesn't look like they are uh, very well uh, poised to oppose us. And here we do see Liberia now wants a trade agreement. We, of course, abandoned them completely once the war started, but we changed their attitude towards being cooperative. And so this bankroll, we should be able to get them in the customs union eventually. We're going to improve relations with them here as well. And we're going to take a look. Can we get anyone in our customs union? Not quite yet. Uh, Burma we're working on. And so Burma will be pretty nice once we can get them in here. We did open up Siam's market, so let's actually also bankroll them. And we will also take a look at, uh, you know, doing a whole bunch of trade with them, which we haven't started up yet. Big nice on a trade agreement from Siam. Also indicative that they want to play ball after we did a whole bunch of trade with them. We're going to also improve relations because we are floating this extra, you know, Diplo kind of coming in here. But we will definitely want to pull someone in the customs union. A big reason why we have a bunch of excess Diplo is, of course, uh, because Great Xing. Uh, I think we had a defense pact and we we had him in the customs union and now we have neither and so uh that freed up a whole bunch of diplo for us to uh make some moves and try and improve relations uh you know if there's anyone else that we have on our current bankroll list uh with whom we have uh poor relations or relatively poor relations we can just come in and also improve relations alongside that as long as they have less than plus 50 so someone like egypt we can improve um we're already improving with bengal in fact trying to get to the point where we can bankroll them and so this will help us down the road to be able to pull people into our market. We're kind of uh, plateauing a little bit here in terms of the GDP, but uh, that might be because, uh, you know, we have so many people. I'm not sure exactly why that is that we're plateauing. I suppose we're actually still cranking up at a decent pace, but, uh, you know, continuing on here. After quite a bit of time, we are getting really close to, an, uh, you know, enacting parliamentary republics so we can get rid of the feckless Lincoln, son of the late and great Abraham Lincoln, but this guy, Thomas Lincoln, he's not the same as his father. Psychologically afflicted by the inability to live in his father's great footsteps, he's just not the man his father was. To sing. Come and see. I'm not sure if it's war that's causing a massive performance hit, but things are moving along a little bit slow here. Um, we, of course, do also have some very strange looking front spaghetti, and the armies are all kind of moving around. Uh, trying to make some army moves not money moves and you know it is a little bit hard to manage because a lot of these that look like there are armies are in fact our subject armies because they have the same color and so this is uh you know an enormous headache uh, to, you know, fight this uh, massive, massive war. and uh, But it looks like it will be coming to a close uh, soon. Uh, you know, or at least, yeah, Russia is pretty willing to capitulate here. And, you know, Qing's not that far off. And so we will continue trying to manage stuff as best we can. You know, the GDP is starting to crank up a little bit again. Um, and, uh, you know, if we can get... Uh, specifically Qing back in the market. This is actually probably the biggest compounding variable. Oh, and we get some front unification there. That's going to be a big help as well. Uh, but if we can get Qing back in the market, I think we will break 1 billion. And this has been the, the least money of all money moves, you know, getting in a land war in Russia in the winter. Uh, but, you know, someone's got someone's to gotta do it. It shouldn't have been us, though, I suppose. We should be enforcing on this next tick here, uh, at least on Russia, and then all these mo armies. I think it's the fact that there's so many battles going on because, you know, there's battles available in every single state. Oh, yeah, now we're going way faster. So, yeah, that was the cause of the... Br oh, my God, I hate this bug. So, everyone got unassigned from their fronts, so we will have to reassign everyone to their front. Uh, and somehow, somehow, the war leader is, in fact, uh, not... Uh, not going to be Ching. 
actually, well, this isn't the craziest somehow, but the war leader is not, in fact, going to be Shing here. Instead, it's going to be, uh, instead, it's going to be, uh, the Ottoman Empire, who's still involved in this war, and we never really did anything to them. And so we will, uh, assign everyone back to a front and try and, uh, get this all fixed up. But you can see here what we were talking about with Perm having an adjacency to Erlist. And so if we get Perm into the Customs Union, um, what we will be able to do is following that we will be able to start bankrolling them of course following this we will have access to our sweet sweet oil here in Erlis. so it looks like we can pull both liberia and ireland into the customs union using an obligation that we have accrued through our bankroll so we will do that with both and then we will stop bankrolling each of them uh get rid of the bankroll that's not ireland that's brazil rookie mistake easy one to make ireland very much looks like brazil and then we will also pull off with liberia and we will just have two more people in the custom union whom we can siphon off uh their migrants now um it'll be you know we will drink their milkshake as it will uh drainage and so uh, what will be happening here is we are going to be pushing in you know we have a couple fronts developed um we're kind of having a little bit of difficulty uh you know we're trying to get people back to the fronts uh we should be okay uh but the big one is going to be just enforcing on the ottomans just regular and they seem to have left all their troops behind so uh we'll just put uh and we already have this designated as the strategic objective so they should be pretty quick to enforce on here as well um we're just hoping that the presence of this uh makes it so we can't be ticked below zero but it does look like we can be ticked below zero so we do have to actually maybe Oh my god, okay. Okay, it's just these two. If there was a third party, we would probably want to go land them, just in order to make sure we get our full enforcement here on Shing. We can now get an obligation with Perm. I uh, don't really want to, uh, or sorry, not an obligation, a trade agreement, which is going to be great for getting them into the customs union. Don't really, they're fairly likely to join if we can just get them up to friendly anyways. And so we don't want to give a, them an obligation, although we could to immediately gain access here, but we would eventually, I think sometime down the line, want to siphon off pops or or not siphon off pops rather uh want to annex perm and so um we will or vassalize them and so we will try and make sure that this is going to be um something that looks good for us or easy for us and if we have an obligation then we can't declare war on them so that's why we're not doing that looks like they are freeing up some of their stuff here but our fronts are overall uh pretty good looking and so if we can close up both these fronts over here get everyone assigned over here now a lot of our units we actually just could not assign to this front uh, which is buggy and it's like bricked for us and so hopefully that doesn't make it so that we can't enforce but we did enforce you know the very important thing was re which was releasing perm uh and it's like uh this was the important one uh, at all that's a lot for lindy uh you know the releasing of perm was the main one um once we get them in our customs union we will restore the natural order of things over here we can maybe try and get cushy zhuzh which would cut the russian market in half a little bit and deny them land access to great shing in which case it would be hard for them to pull great shing back into the market uh but uh all right well we get that on great shing and we will go about uh trying to improve relations with them you could see uh they are antagonistic but friendly we'll bankroll them uh we will bankroll these guys once they have uh you know access to their own hq uh and then we will also do the same with Manchuria and look to kind of get all these guys into the customs union you know uh the Manchuria uh Mongolia Qing and also Perm here so after we stuck in an enormous volume of trade Great Qing is back to being genial so we will invite them to the customs union here and uh you know no harm no foul we get Qing back in the customs union of course they will not have Mongolia or Manchuria but the lion's share of their pops are in this kind of lower region anyways uh you can see which doesn't include Manchuria and Mongolia and so we will get back to siphoning off their pops and you can see our GDP absolutely jumps up uh you know once we have uh, their buy and sell orders in our market helping us out quite a bit uh and so this is going to be big nice uh we of course have an enormous amount of bureaucracy because we have been increasing it uh looking to increase our safety institution a little bit and uh you know uh as these guys gain access to themselves and we gain the ability to export to them because currently they don't have an interest in their own area uh we will do the same uh for them you know increasing huge volumes of trade with them uh so that we can uh you know try and pull them into the market although we are already 
trading with Perm, uh, if I recall correctly. Um, and so, yeah, that's why their market prices don't look absolutely insane, except for the ones that we are depressing. Uh, and so we will hopefully be getting them in. Especially Perm uh, should look pretty, it does look pretty easy, you know, just with the amicable and uh, having this uh, already being willing to join for an obligation, uh, you know, might be a little bit harder on these other two. We now have trade agreements with Perm. Uh, Mongolia and the Great Manchurian, or sorry, we now have trade agreements with Manchuria, the Great Mongolian State, and Perm. Also, uh, we finished up on our tech research for electrical capacitors, uh, which is going to free us up uh, for using some better PMs. Uh, unfortunately, all of these PMs require electricity, so we're really having to, you know, up the electricity in a lot of places in order to really turn them on. They're not really available to us just yet. If we have a low-level textile mill where we have electricity, we can do it, but we can't do it with these high-level, uh, you know, uh, uh, textile mills so we're what we're going to do is we're going to have to you know increase stuff now we can turn on stuff like brine electrolysis here in pennsylvania because we do have enough power here but we're going to have to go through pretty much everything well why don't we put this on auto expand we're going to have to go through pretty much everything and uh you know like kind of province one province at a time and really decide where it is that we can you know turn on these pms because the pms are better and where uh where we might not be able to and this sort of thing so there's going to be quite a bit of that behind the scenes as we, uh, you know, chug along nice and slow uh, towards uh, the inevitable 1936. We notably can now bankroll Bengal, uh, which we will do, of course, wanting to pull them into our market uh, as best we can because they have access to an enormous amount of pops and this would help out a lot. Uh, Manchuria and uh, Mongolia and Perm are still holding out uh, and we are approaching uh, the 1 billion mark, which was kind of the goal for this episode. Um, you know, we wanted to make money moves, but I guess we made a move on Russia, and that wasn't very money, but um, we are now approaching the 1 billion mark. The trade volume with Burma alongside, you know, bankrolling them is made them, despite not having an obligation, willing to join our customs union, which is going to be fantastic. We'll start siphoning off those pops as well. Um, you know, still trying to work on Siam a little bit, and still trying to work on these three. Uh, we did have a little uprising that we sided with uh, in exchange for for them becoming our subject with Radical Ecuador, uh, which is now our subject. And it looks like they can't actually be enforced on uh, because they are not the war leader. We're the war leader uh, because we're their overlord, something like this. Uh, this is a strange little bugginess where the minus 100 isn't real and it can't hurt you if your name's Ecuador at least, Radical Ecuador. Now, regular Ecuador, they're going to get enforced on in a few moments, and we will have a nice little subject to ourselves. Ba-boom. Uh, whom we can, of course, if we wanted to change their color, uh, just immediately come in and reduce their autonomy. But this is not necessarily going to be worth our infamy at this point in time, uh, because we have our eyes set on a bigger prize uh, in the Middle East and probably annexing Persia. And we've done it. We've hit 1 billion GDP here. We get a nice little crank up. It's not about the size of your line. It's about the shape, and you can see pretty erect here. Um, towards the end, you know, we are moving up at a decent clip, uh, which is going to be pretty nice. Uh, just here's a quick look at the customs union, because the customs union is also quite large, you know, on the back of our money moves. We're still trying to hold out about getting, uh, you know, Manchuria, Mongolia, and the Perm in, uh, but we have done a good job uh, this episode really expanding the customs union, you know, getting Burma in, uh, getting China back in, kind of releasing Perm. If that Perm was blue, we'd be fantastically happy, of course we get Ecuador in, uh, you know, Argentina was in, but it is a very, very uh, painted, as it were. And, you know, Prussia looks like they're in, but they're just faking it uh, because we have almost the same color. But not for long once we get on to parliamentary. All right, so we get a gold rush on oil. And while we would normally do mine, 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 it's all mine in California, let's just see how much migration attraction we can get here. Uh, so we will crank that, we will crank that, and, uh, you know, we will have, should have more migration attraction. I guess it's all Already really overpopulated 15 million is quite a bit we have minus from you know uh, pollution impact but we have plus a whole lot from gold rush and oil rush uh, but even that oh there we go that's more like it plus 12 million you love to see it plus 12 million 12 million a year 12 million a year 
that's a big number. That's a heckin' big number. That's really actually probably more than we would like. I don't think we actually want that many people coming to California, but now they're coming to California if you're the Schwarzenegger or the Governator. Uh, and so California will be now really densely populated. And of course, uh, if we take a look at, you know, <laughs> who's there, it's primarily Han, uh, you know, coming into here. But that is a big amount of migration. Big nice, big huge. What are we doing? Why should one stop at a big nice when they can have a bigger nice? We will come in and we will see just how high we can get it with a greener grass campaign too. Uh, this is going to be quite a big number here. Uh, I guess we gotta wait for Monday for the additional 50% to apply uh, and just see what the projected you know, migration and loud car outside truly, truly is. Of course, the game is not going that fast, so perhaps I should have, you know, made this two clips. Uh, gold fields depleted? No! Unfortunate. But now we will see the Monday, and is it gonna update from 12 million? Okay, 13 million. Still bigger, but, uh, 13 million. Big nice. A little over 100 migration attraction. You know, uh, we get Trade Center, Gold Rush, Oil Rush, Greener Grass Campaign, Great Power, and Intelligence. You have Propagandists. Unfortunately, they're not powerful, but also the Statue of Liberty. So many modifiers. And then, uh, you know, from not even... We don't even have unused arable land modifier there anymore, and we're still getting this amount. I thought we still had a pretty big unused arable land modifier, but I guess we're using enough of our arable land. Well, actually, it's all peasants, that's right. So, um, but yeah, that's that's quite a bit of migration without even having uh, what is kind of the stronger modifier. Instead, we just have SOL and available employment, but it is uh, quite a bit. And of course, we will get an enormous amount of unemployment as they flood in here. Even better, we get the Archducal American Dream. We can get plus SOL in California, which of course will push this even higher. Now, it's gonna start coming down as the migrants start flooding in, and I don't think we'll actually get plus 11 million because we will start to get a pretty significant unemployment modifier here. I think it was like four something when we last looked at it, now it's six something. And so the SOL bump, you know, as we come up to next Monday, will probably just bring us back to 13 million. But, you know, this is an enormous amount of pops. We are drinking some milk shakes here um you know with other people yeah it even dropped further because we're getting the pops in but this means that it's just absolute drainage uh you know coming out of like all these other places which look they they're starting we've drained them so much that they're not even all red anymore uh you know the pops really have like left the building and so um this is of course good for us and we are siphoning down i think this starts with 25 million it has less than game start beijing is down a bit hey bay is down to 8 million you know we're really really uh you know siphoning off the pops here and if we look at you know the uh, population heat map here you can see that you know it's no longer the case that like uh, China just looks way more populated than the USA. The USA is starting to catch up here, um, which is, you know, a testament to, you know, us very nearly having more population than China anyway, or as much pop as China. No, actually, we're not that close, but, like, we're closer than, like, what is kind of normal occurrence in normal-looking games, you know? I decided we probably can afford to just give them an obligation, and then once we, the bankroll, we'll just delete the obligation, um, eventually. You know, if we earn an obligation while we already owe them an obligation it just deletes our obligation and so we're just going to uh owe them an obligation and get them into the customs union and you know it would be longer until we can uh you know make progress on them but we're just going to get them both in or generally speaking it will it will likely take longer overall um we could have just waited for them to become you know friendly uh and this probably would have been you know decent or reasonable but uh it's another 11 there and another 16 there and we just kind of wanted to get Get them in because i think we are going to be concluding the episode here uh and of course we finally get access here uh in archducal american Euralisk, and so they're starting to employ up and now they can sell the oil oil is dirt cheap by the way um but uh you know this is uh gonna be kind of concluding the episode here we made some money moves we expanded the market um you know we didn't accrue too much infamy but we managed to do useful stuff uh you know kind of dismantling the russian market getting access over here um I think that uh, the game is proceeding now slow enough in terms of performance that this is likely going to be the last episode unless you guys um, really uh, want us to continue this run. Um, 
Notably, this episode, we didn't include a lot of clips from films, um, and I was just trying out a little bit of a different style with that last episode, um, and so I'm probably going to wait and see um, how that episode does in terms of feedback, as well as, you know, how people seem to feel about it, uh, but let's kind of take a look at a lot of the top line uh, type of metrics. Uh, you know, we have 1 billion GDP, there are GDP per capita is also number one worldwide, just a little bit ahead of Saxony, um, and so that's going to be nice. Literacy kind of coming on up, you can see we do not have the hottest of heat maps. Um, in regards to literacy, I don't think we have the level 5 institution, we definitely can't run the thing. Uh, we do look pretty good in terms of standard of living uh, relative to the rest of the globe at 18 million. Notably, China is not like beat red, just like super red, which is uh, probably a result of their mass exodus, you know, to our market. Uh, you know, they don't have too bad unemployment. If you take a look at the pop heat map, really uh, an impressive story in terms of the migration. Expecting to see this nerfed after 1.5.5, uh, you know, loyalists and... Uh, uh, radicals, we're seeing some things, just kind of uh, comparing to the rest of everyone. Uh, we see that we have a billion GDP, uh, which is 10x the next person. Great Britain's actually doing pretty good with 100 million. Uh, French Republic, 70 million. Austria, Hungary, 56. Bengal is looking pretty hot. Don't know why they haven't managed to pull and pull up and be a GP. Maybe it's just they don't have enough uh, navy. Uh, but uh, you know, we could go for a trade agreement with them in order to try and get them in customs union faster. I think we would stick with the bankroll and improve relations and still look to get them in though. Um Let's just take a look at the cultures and pop kind of thing. Uh, if we take a look at our current cultures, which is including the fact that we are assimilating, Yankee is not even our most uh, populous pop. It is in fact Han now. Uh, you know, we are becoming the Han, uh, let's see, a dynasty, uh, you know, Americas and this type of thing. Man, we're so close to Parliamentary Republic uh, passing, maybe. Uh, we're, we're so close to another tick. But if we take a look, uh, you know, more instead at... Uh, you know, if we look at the charts and we instead look at religion, religion generally kind of shows a little bit more of a comprehensive story because uh, we are in total separation and we are not converting any pops. So while we have, you know, 41 million Han, we have 60 million Mahayana, which, uh, you know, the Han pops and the Mahayana pops, they're probably one and the same. I think there's a few other that will be Mahayana, and so this isn't quite the case like Manchurian uh, but for the most part it is the, the case and so we've converted like 19 million Han you see here Hindu uh, 47 million and uh, Bengali well it's a combination of Bengali and a whole bunch of other ones uh, in terms of the cultures because there's a lot of Indian cultures here now but we you know uh, our, our, our population is very much not the result of uh, you know us expanding the Protestants that were here, and if you take a look, uh, the Protestants which have grown from the large ca loud Karite side, the Protestants that have grown, you know, from the initial starting population in the United States, which I think is, if I'm not mistaken, it's around 18 million, something like this. Maybe I'm mistaken. I actually can't quite remember the number, but it's only 47 million out of 229 million. So this is truly, truly, truly a nation of immigrants uh, that we have here, uh, where we, of course, uh, you know, gave an enormous amount of land to the Indian people. You know, it was unright that we took the land from Indian people, and so, uh, you know, as a may way of making amends, we gave it to Indian people, you know, the Tamil people, the Bengali people, the Magali, Bengali, Gujarat, Bihari, Tamil, uh, you know, all throughout here, you know, and you, we barely see, you know, Yankee. We, of course, see Yankee and, uh, Canada, uh, along with Punjabi, Japanese, and the like, uh, but, you know, us being able to institute pretty big, you know, cultural uh, migration and this type of thing uh, has really made this run uh, kind of pop off, which is why we hit 1 billion so fast, and is uh, subsequently why, uh, you know, the game is going so slow. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this episode and this run. Maybe we have one more in us, uh, depending on how things uh, go. Uh, but I think this will be the end of the run. I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and etc. Mostly etc. And have a good day. Oh, one more thing. One more thing. Now, children, I was asked to bring a healthy snack. So join me in the hall for swine livers and Capri Suns. Uh